we're supposed to have discernment. We're supposed to know what it is that we're allowed to pour into our lives and speak into our lives. It, it, goes, it goes beyond just the, the things that we watch on, on secular television or, or if we're allowing things that are not of God come into our lives. There's, there could be even things that we think are even godly that we're allowed to come into our lives. But if we're not checking on what we're allowing to come into our lives, we can be allow, inviting things in that, that are going to do nothing but harm, harm, to, harm to us. Revival coming. It is prophesied in the book of Joel that in the last days that God's going to pour out His Spirit upon all flesh. And it's it's coming, people, and, and I don't I don't want to miss out on it. It's not too much. The world would, would try to convince you that, man, you got to give up too much. But I'm here to tell you tonight that if you'll just give those things up that, you're, that you think that you can't live without, if you will give those things up and get yourself free tonight, get up. You know, if, if you're being bound by things, and I want to encourage you tonight as, as we do an altar call tonight, get up to this altar tonight and begin to give that over to God because He is the only one that can set you free. We cannot set you free. The music can't set you free. The, you know, the, the, the drama, as great as, as, as it is, it can't set you free. But the Spirit of God God that is in this room right now that can set you free. As evening came, Jesus said unto his disciples, let's cross to the other side of the lake. Here on the Sea of Galilee, around the area, Jesus' ministry, most of the miracles and the ministry of Jesus is going to take place around this very famous Sea of Galilee. And we find that Jesus' disciples, many of these men, make their livelihood from this lake, the big freshwater lake here in Israel. The population around the Galilee region today is about 170,000 people. But at the time of Jesus, there's about a half a million people that make their livelihood and live around the shores of the Galilee. Now, Jesus' disciples, being experienced on this water, understands about the, the, this water and how that very quickly it can change from a calm sea, a calm lake, to a very fierce and very angry lake. The winds coming off of the mountains sweeping down into this lake can make it very hazardous even today for the modern boats that we have today. Well, the sh boats that, of course, the disciples had then, they were, they were maybe concerned about the waters, but Jesus tells them as he gets into the boat, let's go to the other side. Jesus has got business on the other side of this lake. He's going to be meeting someone that really needs a deliverance, a man that is possessed of demons. And so he really needs to get across the other side of this lake. So he gives the command, let's go to the other side of the lake. And when he does, uh, the scriptures tell us that the winds begin to kick up. Now the winds begin to kick up probably somewhere about out in the middle of the lake because knowing the power of God and the majesty of God wanting to show that he can take care of you no matter what the situation, it probably takes place somewhere out in the middle because it's, a, it's not a very large sea. It's called the Sea of Galilee, but it really is a lake. It's about eight miles wide and about 14 miles long. So the disciples are simply obeying the command of the Lord and Jesus, after a long day of ministry, he decides to go ahead and take his rest there in the bottom of the boat. Well, in the, while Jesus is resting, the winds kick up and these very experienced fishermen realize they're in trouble. They realize that if they don't get this boat to shore, the boat's gonna be swamped, they're all gonna drown. So they do everything they can to obey the command of God, to not interrupt God, who is Jesus, to allow him to sleep until it finally comes to the point where the word of God says because of the wind and the wave and the waters begin to fill the boat, one of the disciples run and wake up Jesus who's sleeping in the hinder part of the, sheep, the, uh, the ship, the word says, and said, Lord, don't you care that we're about to die? Don't you care that we're about to perish? Well, Jesus is aroused from his rest and he stands up in this rocking boat under the power of the wind and the wave and he simply speaks, peace, be still. And the wind and the wave obey him. And these men around, they're looking at one another and says, what kind of man is this? And Jesus looks at these men and he says, you men of little faith, how can you doubt? Now, how is it that these are very experienced men? Jesus is not an experienced fisherman. That wasn't his livelihood. And he followed in the footsteps of his father who was a builder. So how is it that Jesus, an unexperienced fisherman, can be at calm and at peace in this lake when these very experienced men are absolutely in terror of their lives being lost at any moment. 
I don't think it is Jesus didn't care. Of course he cared. The Bible tells us we need to cast our care upon the Lord because he cares for us. Jesus is calm because he knows that he's got business on the other side of this lake. So Jesus is understanding. He didn't make any difference about the wind or the wave. Because he's obeying what the Holy Spirit has told him to do, Jesus knows he's going to arrive at the other side. Jesus doesn't put his men in danger, but it certainly puts them in a place of a test whether or not they're going to obey the word of the Lord. Jesus certainly had that faith. He knew he was on a mission. He was on commission from God to go and do a great and mighty work, and that's why he's at peace. And for my friend, when we're serving the Lord and we're, we're trying to obey God to the best of our ability, and sometimes we get out on something like the Lake of Life, and I like out on the Sea of Galilee, and the winds become contrary to us and about ready to sink our mission. But as long as we have God on our side, as long as we're making sure that Jesus is with us, as long as we keep ourselves in the presence of Almighty God, then it really doesn't make any difference about the wind or the wave, or, or it doesn't make any difference about the storms of life that come against us. Know this, that Jesus said, I am with you always, and I'll never leave you. The Scriptures decree that he is, uh, will stick closer to us than a brother. Jesus is the friend that never leaves you. And if God gives you the commission to go and do, then understand that there's also going to be the power of God that is, you're going to be endued with for you to be able to accomplish your mission. Don't give up, my friend, just because you happen to be in the midst of a great storm or a, a, a great storm of life. Don't give up now. Don't lay it down now. Because if Jesus has promised you that I'm sure, because of the Word of God is sure, the Word of God is a covenant book, if Jesus said it, you're going to make it. Rejoice, child of God, even though you may be in a present circumstance right now that you don't understand. You don't understand why I'm going through what I'm going through. Know this, that Jesus is with you, even when you seem like you can't feel him or you feel like your prayers are, are bouncing against uh, brass heavens. Or, uh, Jesus is a million miles from you. Know this, that his promise is true. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. And Jesus will walk with you in every situation. Cast your care now upon the Lord. The Bible tells us to be anxious for nothing. Don't worry. Trust God. Because as sure as these men found out that Jesus can rebuke the adversity that comes against them, Jesus will also rebuke the adversity that comes against you. That's a promise from the Word of God. The Scriptures tell us in Isaiah 54 and 17, No weapon formed against us shall continue to prosper. No weapon shall prosper. That's an awesome promise for the child of God. Jesus is on your side. Keep Jesus in your life. And I'm sure, my friend, no matter what the trial is, no matter what the storm of life is, you will make it. And you have a great testimony that in a moment when I thought I was going down, God rescued me. He showed me how much he loved me, how much he cared for me. And I'm going to arrive at my destination. Soon, my dear friend, we shall be on the shore. Yes, the golden shores of glory. But until that time, adversity may come, the storms may come, but just rejoice because when you've got Jesus on board, you'll make it.
praise, Lord. I give you all the praise, Jesus. Give you all the praise, Jesus. Hallelujah. We're supposed to have discernment. We're supposed to know what it is that we're allowed to pour into our lives and speak into our lives. It, it, goes, it goes beyond just the, the things that we watch on, on secular television or, or if we're allowing things that are not of God come into our lives. There's, there could be even things that we think are even godly that we're allowed to come into our lives. But if we're not checking on what we're allowed to come into our lives, we can be allow, inviting things in that, that are going to do nothing but harm, harm, to, harm to us. Revival coming. It is prophesied in the book of Joel that in the last days that God's going to pour out His Spirit upon all flesh. And it's it's coming, people, and, and I don't I don't want to miss out on it. It's not too much. The world would, would try to convince you that, man, you got to give up too much. But I'm here to tell you tonight that if you'll just give those things up that, you're, that you think that you can't live without, if you will give those things up and get yourself free tonight, get up. You know, if, if you're being bound by things, and I want to encourage you tonight as, as we do an altar call tonight, get up to this altar tonight and begin to give that over to God because He is the only one that can set you free. We cannot set you free. The music can't set you free. The, you know, the, the, the drama, as great as, as, as it is, it can't set you free. But the Spirit of God that is in this room right now, that can set you free. Well, I trust that something was sung today or something was said in a teaching or something that just kind of touched your heart. And I pray that God has ministered to you in some supernatural way. We're believing for healing power, that God is going to touch your body. Many of you have called on the prayer lines and are asking for miracles in your life. God still does miracles today. The Word of God teaches us that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever out of Hebrews 13 and 8. So we understand that if we see Jesus doing it, in the New Testament, healing and delivering people and setting them free and just changing lives, then he's doing the same thing today. Maybe at some time during the broadcast, you felt the power of God just touch you in a certain way and maybe you're not ready to meet the Lord. Maybe you've never really truly asked Jesus into your heart and life. You can do that right now, my friend, by simply praying a simple prayer and asking Jesus to enter your heart. He is the Son of God. He is the only way to God. I know there's a lot of religions out there that say there's many ways to God, but Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. And no matter what you've done, no matter what kind of life you live, Jesus is ready to change your life. He's ready to forgive you of every wrong thing that you've ever done. But Jesus is a gentleman. He won't force his way in. He comes by invitation. And if you'd like to pray that prayer with me right now, just a simple prayer of asking God in your life, tonight, God will begin to turn your life around. You're going to begin to see miracles happen in your life. God can fix every bad situation if you'll just give Jesus your heart. Why don't you pray with me right now? Lord Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. I believe that you were crucified and died for my sins. I also believe that you rose from the dead. And because of you, I can be saved. I confess my sins every wrong thing I've ever done. I confess them all. I blame no one. Come into my life, Lord. Be my Lord and Savior, and I'll live for you forever. I ask this all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, if you prayed that simple prayer and meant it, you really believed it in your heart, then something happened. Maybe you didn't feel anything, but something happened. At that moment, God wiped away every stain of sin in your life, and now you're a child of God. And now you need to be a part of the kingdom of God. Yes, you need to be a part of the kingdom of God by joining a church somewhere, going and being a part of a fellowship and finding out what you can do in the kingdom of God because you're on assignment. Jesus is coming again, my friend. Thanks be unto God that you're ready to meet him in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. We're gonna see the return of the Lord. I know you're glad that you're ready. I'd like for you to come and visit with us here at Victory anytime. Come and be with us. We'd love to pray with you. We'd love to just share our heart with you, share Jesus with you. God is awesome this day, and he's changing lives all over this area, and I'm glad that he's changing yours. Thanks be unto God because of what Jesus has done. We can walk in victory every day, and praise God, you're walking in victory now. Victory Now is
is the ministry broadcast of Victory World Outreach Center in Richmond, Kentucky. If you live or are in the metro area, we invite you to come and worship with us on Sundays at 1030 a.m., Wednesdays at 7, and Saturdays at 7 p.m. Victory World Outreach Center is just off of I-75 at exit 90, going north on US-25 Lexington Road, three-tenths of a mile on your left. To learn more about the ministries and events of Victory World Outreach Center, visit us online at www.vwoc.com. For prayer requests or comments, write to us at Victory World Outreach Center, P.O. Box 826, Richmond, Kentucky, 40476, or by email at info at vwoc.com. It's our prayer that you may know the revelation the Word of God teaches about the power that Jesus has given you to walk in victory in every area of your life.